Um, I also want to remind you that arc sine means the same thing as sine negative one. It's the same thing for arc cosine, cosine negative one, and then arc tangent is tangent negative one. So I want, I want to do a couple examples, and we're going to look at that chart to see if uh, what where our answer should be. So let's just get after this. Let's do the arc sine of one half. So the first thing we want to look at is in our domain, can we do the arc sine of one half? In other words, is one half between negative one and one. Well, yes it is, so I can do that. So that's one thing we have to do. Now the range tells me that my answers have to be between negative pi over two and positive pi over two. Now if this is degrees, that means negative 90 to 90. So that means that this tells me I need to put my a little triangle in quadrant one. I'm gonna show you why I'm gonna put a triangle in quadrant one. But let's just go ahead and draw a little axes here. All right, sine is positive in quadrant one and quadrant two. It's negative in quadrant three and quadrant four. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the quadrant that deals with zero to pi over two and that's quadrant one. So I'm gonna draw a triangle there and sine is, this is the same thing as sine of some answer is equal to one half. I gotta figure out what this is. So I'm gonna put my angle right here. So the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And then if you do your Pythagorean theorem or your triples, this is the square root of three. And then you just have to ask yourself, self, what is this angle right here? Well, the angle in a one, two square root of three triangle that's across from the one is a 30 degree angle. And in radians, that is pi over six. Now let's make sure that we've given an appropriate answer. Is pi over six between negative pi over two and positive pi over two? Well, of course it is. And in degrees, is 30 degrees in between negative 90 and 90? So that is the principal inverse value. Now I'm not saying that's the only place where sine is one half, but that's the answer you must give if I ask you arc sine of one half. Let's do another example. Let's do arc sine of square root of three over two, but let's do a negative square root of three over two. Now let's see if we have the right to ask this. Is negative square root of three over two between negative one and one? Uh, of course, because the square root of three is smaller than two, so this is smaller than, than one. So I have the right to ask this. Now where are we gonna put this triangle, however? Well, sine is negative in quadrants three and quadrant four. And if we go clockwise, we're going with negative angles. So I can see between zero and negative pi over two, that's quadrant four. That's where I need to put my triangle. So we're gonna draw another axis here. This time we're gonna put our triangle down here in quadrant four. Why? Because sine is negative in quadrant four. And so let's label it. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, the negative would have to go with that square root of three. This adjacent side with the Pythagorean theorem would be a one. So what is this angle right here? Well, it's a one, two square root of three triangle. And the one across from the square root of three, that's a 60 degree angle, which in radians is pi over three, but we went clockwise. So this is negative pi over three. Now, is that answer an acceptable answer? Yes, it's in between negative pi over two and positive pi over two. Let's do another example. Let's do arc cosine, arc cosine of one over the square root of two and let's make it negative. So let's go look at the table. Is that between, for arc cosine domain, is that between negative one and one? Well, yes it is. So now I just have to figure out what quadrant I need to put this in. Now the range for arc cosine is zero to pi. So this is zero this is pi over two, and this is pi. Where is cosine negative? Cosine is negative in quadrants two and quadrant three. So I have to draw my triangle in quadrant two because it's the only quadrant that's in between zero and pi. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. The opposite side would be a one because of the Pythagorean theorem. This is the angle, the reference angle, which happens to be a 45 degree reference angle. So what is this rotation from there to there? That is 135 degrees, which happens to be three pi over four. 
So let's go look and see if that was an okay answer for my range. Is that between zero and pi? Zero and 180? Yes, it is. All right, let's do another example. Let's do the arc sine of five. So the first thing we're gonna do is go up here to the top and we're gonna see that five is not in the domain for arc sine. Therefore, we don't have the right to ask that question. So we're gonna say that does not exist. That's pretty easy. All right, let's do the arc sine of one. Now, do I have the right to ask for the arc sine of one? So I come up here and I say, well, yes, I do. One is the biggest number in the domain, and there's an or equal to, and that's a pretty easy answer because I can just look to the furthest right of the range. That's 90 degrees, or pi over two. Is it a true statement that the sine of pi over two equals one? Well, yes, it is. All right, let's do one last example. Let's do the arc tangent of infinity. Let's go see if we have the right to do the arc tangent of infinity. Well, we do. There's infinity right there, and it's or equal to, so it's going to be pi over 2. And if you look at your graph for arc tangent, and if you look way, well, out towards infinity on the x axis, you'll see it has a horizontal asymptote right there at pi over 2. So, anyway, that's it for this lesson, and I will see you guys tomorrow.